convention, the time when North Carolina Farm Bureau members gather to reflect and look ahead. We had great vision for this year. No one predicted a pandemic in 2020. COVID-19 has seemingly separated us all. But even apart, the mission has not changed. Farm Bureau is the voice for farmers. Over the next four days, we'll be sharing your voice. Once you start rolling, you know, and start telling your story, it starts coming out easier. Your stories. I've never wanted to do anything else other than run cattle. Your successes. When you put your hands in the dirt, it changed me. And hear why. And we're going to still hashtag still be farming into the future. It's the first ever NCFB virtual convention and it starts right now. Hi, I'm Sean Hardy. Welcome and thank you for joining us as we kick off North Carolina Farm Bureau's first ever annual convention video series. I truly wish we could gather in Greensboro as we normally would, but even so we remain united as an organization and have much to celebrate and reflect on even under these extraordinary circumstances. Over the next several days, our plan is to highlight and recognize our volunteer leaders and our key partners that make Farm Bureau the strong and influential voice for farmers and rural North Carolinians. Since 1936, our core mission as an organization has been and continues to be advocating for farmers and rural communities in the legislative arena. Our farmers are true patriots. They take great pride in their communities, in their work, and in their country. Even under the most unusual circumstances in 2020, and after successive years of financial strain, our farmer leaders turned out to vote in what some would say was the most important election of our lifetime. Our staff and volunteers continue to be engaged with governmental leaders on the issues that impact our operations and communities the most. As a former volunteer and now president of our organization, I've never been more proud of how we continued pushing our work forward, even in the face of such great adversity. I'm grateful for the strong relationships we have with our elected officials who prioritize the needs of North Carolina and American agriculture. Agriculture is the backbone of our country and our great state. No other country in the world enjoys as safe, abundant, and affordable a food supply as the United States of America. I hope you take great pride in the contributions you make to your fellow man and in the work we strive to do alongside of you each day, ensuring that current and future generations of North Carolina farmers can continue to do what they love each and every day. And with that, let's kick off this virtual convention, just as we would if we were together, with the Pledge of Allegiance from our Young Farmers and Ranchers Committee Chair, Brandon Batten. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brandon. 2020 made headlines for many reasons, one of the biggest being the recent election. North Carolina Farm Bureau is proud to work with lawmakers to ensure farmers' needs are met. And we're proud to hear from some of those leaders today, starting with North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Hi, everybody. As someone who worked hard on the farm every summer when I was growing up, I'm grateful to have such a strong working relationship with the North Carolina Farm Bureau. Agriculture is the top economic driver here in North Carolina, thanks to our dedicated, highly skilled farmers. You've faced so much in the past few years, including hurricanes and floods, and now a global pandemic. I've worked with the federal government, the legislature, the agriculture commissioner, and the Farm Bureau to supply direct help in times of need. And I wanna thank the thousands of agriculture employees who've been working on the front lines during this pandemic, producing the crops that keep our state's economy running and keeps people fed across the world. Our farmers are tough and resilient. And just as in the past, North Carolina will emerge from this crisis even stronger than before. Thank you all so much.
Hi, I'm Tom Tillis, Senator from the great state of North Carolina. Welcome to the 2020 North Carolina Farm Bureau Virtual Annual Meeting. The Farm Bureau plays a crucial role in supporting our farmers and agriculture system across our state. And through our partnership and visiting farmers, I can tell you they are some of the most patriotic people I know. Working in the agriculture industry is important and it ensures Americans have food on the table. We're eternally grateful that you wake up every morning to feed the nation. And now more than ever, we need to remember that we're stronger together. I'm committed to doing my part to remember that we have more that unites us than divides us. And no matter what your political beliefs are, I will represent all North Carolinians in the U.S. Senate. Thank you for letting me speak today. I look forward to our partnership to support North Carolina's agriculture community the very best way we can. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Hello, I'm Commissioner of Agriculture Steve Troxler, and I'm happy to be able to join you virtually for your annual meeting. I'd much prefer to meet with you in person just like we always have, but thanks to technology and agriculture's ever adaptive ways, we're going to make this work until we get this virus under control. That's agriculture's can-do attitude, and that's served our industry well over the years. 2020 has challenged us all in ways we have never thought possible, but we're still standing, and that's a good thing. And speaking of still standing and challenges, I want to thank all of you for your support during this wacky election season. I'm very proud to be serving a fifth term as your Commissioner of Agriculture. I'm encouraged by the news of a vaccine being available soon. In the meantime, we need to remain vigilant in protecting ourselves and others. I can tell you that I've never lost confidence in our agricultural and food manufacturing community's commitment to continue to provide food, fiber, and fuel. I want to thank President Sean Harding and the North Carolina Farm Bureau's team for their leadership and support throughout this pandemic. I've really enjoyed working with President Harding and getting to know him more. We have really developed a strong connection. I think him being a farmer and me being a farmer has really cemented the relationship that we have. President Harding and his team have been a steady and strong voice for agriculture and agribusiness. Thank you for that commitment. From the start of the pandemic, my phone has stayed busy with farmers and agribusiness owners wanting to make sure they could continue working. We've all worked hard all year long to ensure that farmers markets remained open, that agricultural workers were recognized as essential, that there was relief and assistance program for farmers and their workers, and that farms and agribusinesses had access to PPE to protect their workers. With every call, we went to work to ensure the concerns and needs of agriculture and food production were not overlooked. I applaud and thank each and every one of you who have continued to work to ensure we're fed. Even in the face of great adversity, you have persevered. As we begin to look toward 2021, I believe we will emerge stronger for the challenge. Many people sought out local foods during this pandemic and I hope that will translate into more opportunities for farmers long term. I hope more people have a greater understanding about where their food comes from and the connection we all have to the farm. I know we will get through this together. Agriculture and agribusiness are adapting. We have certainly seen that this year and many farming operations had to throw out their playbooks and figure out how a new way to make their businesses work. I'm extremely proud of what I have seen this year. I found it interesting how many climate change resilience, resiliency and sustainability questions I was asked during the campaign season. And I realized that those of us in agriculture are going to need to start to embrace some of these buzzwords so we can help the non-farming public understand the contributions that farm and forest lands already contribute to environmental sustainability. And I can hardly think of an industry that understands and divines resiliency more than agriculture. Together, we're going to continue to move this industry forward. Together, we will look to expand new opportunities for farmers and agribusiness. And together, I believe we will see agriculture emerge as a $100 billion industry in this state. 
Thank you for everything you do to make agriculture and agribusiness our number one industry. Thank you for your continued support for our department. Keep the faith as we look to 2021 that it will be a better year for all of us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Meredith Bernard in Caswell County. We raise beef cows, hay, corn, and soybeans. I farm and I vote because rural votes matter. Farmers' votes matter. Our freedom to vote matters, and so does yours. Hi, my name is Rachel Van Hoof. I live in Northern Orange County, Hurdle Mills, North Carolina. I raise beef cattle and hay. I'm a farmer and I vote because I want the candidates to know that farmers and ranchers are paying attention to what's going on in our national and state capitals. Hi, I'm Kelly Archambo. We farm cotton, corn, soybeans, and wheat in Hope County. I farm, I vote, to ensure that the farmers' voices are heard nationally and locally. My name is Jamie Clark. I'm from Stokes County, North Carolina. I farm and I vote to protect the future of North Carolina agriculture for generations to come. Hi, I'm Brandon Brown with Alexander County Farm Bureau. I farm, I vote, because agriculture needs dependable trade. My name is Kamal Bell. I'm with the Orange County Farm Bureau. Here at Sankofa Farms, we grow kale, collards, lettuce, and an abundance of leafy greens. We also have bees. I farm, I vote, because I want the next generation in agriculture to succeed. I'm Sydney Dunn. My family grows tobacco, sweet potatoes, and soybeans in Johnston County. I farm, I vote because we need lawmakers in Raleigh and DC who are going to stand up for agriculture, ag education, rural communities, and FFA. Hello, I'm Josh Brown from Lewis County Farm Bureau. I farm and I vote so that one day my kids will be able to farm with me as well. Hi, I'm Johnny Wishon with Allegheny County Farm Bureau. I farm and I vote because immigration reform needs to include agricultural workers. Hello, my name is Renee McPherson and I'm from Alamance County. We grow corn, soybeans, wheat, cows, and hay. I farm, I vote because farmers need lawmakers in Raleigh and D.C. to understand and support agriculture. Hi, I'm Sean Harding, President of North Carolina Farm Bureau. And I farm, I vote because no matter the cause or the conviction, we all have a say in our government. I'm Ronald Hawkins from Rutherford County, North Carolina. I farm and I vote. It's my privilege, it's my responsibility, it's my obligation to help keep America strong. My name is Brandon Batten, a row crop farmer from Johnston County. I farm, I vote for a brighter future for agriculture and my children. I'm Lindsay Utley. I raise commercial livestock and I grow my UPIC pumpkins in Lenore County. I farm and I vote because I want the leaders of our country to care about farmers. And I care about the next generation of agriculture. Ag is the backbone of our country, and I want my elected officials to have my back. Hi, I'm Lee Herman with Alexander County Farm Bureau. I farm, I vote so my family can have affordable health care. Hi, I'm Kim Stewart. I live in rural Northeast Franklin County in a small community called Wood. Family, faith, and farming are the tenants of our small community and we just value them so, so much. Since the passing of my dad, our farm has been in transition. And so I really want to make sure going forward that our farming operation is in place and intact going forward for our future generations. I farm, I vote because rural votes need to be heard and they do matter. Thanks. I farm, I vote because the future depends on it. Oh. Hey. Hi, my name's Josh Dobson, your next North Carolina Commissioner of Labor. I really just want to say thank you to Farm Bureau and your members. There's been so many times over the last seven years when I needed a resource, when I needed people that I could go to that I could trust on insurance issues and on ag issues. And you all were there for me every step of the way. And as when I announced for Commissioner of Labor, you guys reached out to me and you were there for me 
when I needed you, and that's not lost on me. And now that I've been fortunate enough to be elected the next Commissioner of Labor in North Carolina, I have big shoes to fill with Commissioner Cherie Berry, but I look forward to having a strong relationship with Commissioner Troxler, and I look forward to having a strong relationship with you. Uh, that same resource that you've been over the last seven or eight years, when I wasn't sure about an issue, or I wasn't sure which way to go, you guys were there for me. That's what I want to continue as your next Commissioner of Labor, to continue to have that relationship and to continue to lean on you as a resource because I'm going to need you as much as you're going to need me over the next four years. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to continue to work with you and I look forward to what we can accomplish together. Again, I'm Josh Dobson, your next Commissioner of Labor, and I'm ready to get to work. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Marshall, your Secretary of State. The first week in December in Greensboro for Farm Bureau is always on my calendar, and no COVID was going to keep me from being with you, even though this is a virtual event. I am honored to be with you. 2020 has thrown a lot at us, a persistent global pandemic that threatens the health of so many, both physically, mentally, and financially, and a divisive election nationally. But if there's one thing North Carolinians and especially our agriculture community and small towns know how to do, it is to come together and work together when the going gets tough. Whether it's a hurricane, tornado, or other natural disaster, or it's a global pandemic, we see neighbors helping neighbors here in North Carolina, whether it's lending a hand or lifting each other up. For those of you who have not heard me speak before, you need to know, I am a farm girl, a lifetime 4-H'er, and a product of a Farm Bureau family. My jobs growing up involved the farm and Farm Bureau. All I knew growing up was farm life. My father and grandfather farmed together and ran a feed mill. We grew corn, wheat, and hay. We had layers and fat cattle to feed. I have been around the world in my work and I would not trade my farm and small town upbringing for any other. I would not be where I am today without my experiences with 4-H. Farm families are hardy and resilient and a huge piece of the fabric that makes up this great state. Today, you're hearing a lot about patriotism. When you look up the definition of patriotism, it talks about the love and devotion to one's country. To me, that love and devotion is to our fellow citizens, our neighbors. You would be hard pressed to find folks with more patriotic spirit than our farmers here in North Carolina. There's a great love for this country and this state, and you take great pride in working around the clock to grow the finest products in the world. Our farmers know firsthand the beauty of our state's mountains, forests, flatlands, and waterways, because that's where your offices are. Farm people are resilient and resourceful. Learn how to make things happen how to repair stuff. We learn management, money management, time management, and setting priorities. We have also learned to constantly upgrade, innovate, and diversify to be successful. Farmers produce farm families who learn farm values and how to handle life issues and to create success through stewardship of their resources. Resilience today means more than being hard-headed and starting over. Resilience has new meaning today. It does require perseverance, but also requires marketing, innovation, and working smarter as well as working harder. There's no better place than North Carolina to redefine resilience. I say that because we have hardworking producers with a tradition of problem solving and a great youth program in 4-H to bring on the next generation. We also have North Carolina State University with experts and world-class research capacity to not only solve problems, but to lead the world in problem solving and to grow a new class of experts. And we have the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service to deliver the message. And very importantly, we have the North Carolina Farm Bureau to provide leadership, to equip us with information and allow us to join together to meet, to commiserate with fellow members who know how you are feeling and to be with people who understand and really care. Our challenge 
is to grow the community of those who care about the success of agriculture in North Carolina. I, for one, care deeply about your success. The Secretary of State's office is the place where business begins in North Carolina, so I do work in economic development. Also, the Secretary of State's office has international aspects to the office. Therefore, I meet with international visitors on a regular basis, especially in the last several years. Some are business leaders themselves seeking opportunities. Others are diplomats trying to understand the complexity of the U.S. trade situation. In all of these conversations, I stress our educational success, our research capacity, and our agricultural products. When you're talking about agriculture as North Carolina's largest economic sector, there should be no rural urban divide politically. The success and survival of our agricultural sector and our small rural communities is just as important as the growth and vitality of our urban centers. All you have to do is look at the bottom line. A good day in America, agriculture provides millions of jobs and nutritious meals in our nation. Odds are most of us had a North Carolina product on our dinner tables a week ago during Thanksgiving, whether it was turkey or sweet potato in some form. And it will again as we celebrate Christmas and other holidays with a Christmas tree from Western North Carolina or ham biscuits on Christmas morning. Holidays are about families, and the Farm Bureau is one of North Carolina's largest and strongest families. It's my family. Have a blessed holiday season. Stay healthy and safe, and God bless you in North Carolina. Advocacy is the key objective for North Carolina Farm Bureau. Our members and staff had plenty of issues to keep everyone engaged in 2020. A major legal victory in a case involving general permit requirements for North Carolina's swine and dairy farmers. Last year, the Department of Environmental Quality renewed the permits and added three new requirements for animal operations, including groundwater monitoring, phosphorus-based land application limits, and annual reports. North Carolina Farm Bureau appealed the requirements because their adoption violated state administrative law. In May, a state court blocked DEQ's enforcement of those requirements. Another legal victory came in June, when a federal district court judge in California ruled the Trump administration's navigable waters protection rule could take effect. NWPR replaced the Obama administration's onerous 2015 WOTUS rule. Farm Bureau opposed this rule for years because if implemented, it would significantly increase federal control over private land. This case is not over, but NCFB is helping to ensure NWPR remains intact. NCFB worked with federal agencies to help farmers who suffered from reduced commodity prices and market losses due to COVID-19. The Coronavirus Food Assistance Program provided direct payments to producers. When USDA FSA asked for comments for commodities not originally included, NCFB submitted information on behalf of North Carolina's apple, aquaculture, tobacco, nursery and sweet potato producers. Those commodities were later included in the CFAP program. CFAP also offered additional assistance through the USDA Farmers to Families Food Box Program. That program purchased products directly from farms for distribution to those in need and impacted by COVID-19. Several North Carolina farmers benefited, and our state received national attention for the success of the program, prompting visits from President Donald Trump, U.S. Senator Tom Tillis, and USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue. During another stop, Purdue visited French Broad Electric Membership Corporation to announce a $3 million grant that will bring high-speed internet to Madison County. In September, he returned to North Carolina along with Congressman Richard Hudson to participate in a farm tour and farmer Q&A session at Bird Family Farms in Harnett County.
North Carolina Farm Bureau, American Farm Bureau, and 160 other agriculture organizations sent a letter to the White House Coronavirus Task Force asking for more resources for farmers to protect farm employees from the coronavirus. Some of the recommendations include adapting housing requirements, more testing resources, and prioritizing PPE and future vaccine distribution. And before COVID, our executive board went to Washington, D.C. as part of an educational tour. They visited Capitol Hill and participated in briefings with the deputy assistant to the president and the House Ag Committee deputy chief economist. They talked about trade, labor, broadband, and other issues affecting North Carolina farmers. You know, Farm Bureau is a great representative and they tell our story very well up here. But it's one thing to hear it from them, but another to hear it from the people that are actually experiencing those things and have personal stories that they can convey to these folks. The trip wrapped up with a congressional breakfast with both U.S. Senators and all 13 congressional districts represented. We want to thank all our lawmakers for the work they do in Raleigh and Washington, and we look forward to continuing our partnerships in the years to come. We also want to thank you for what you do to help advocate for agriculture, and thank you for watching. Coming up tomorrow, we'll highlight our Young Farmer Rancher Award winners and hear about the success of Ag in the Classroom in 2020. Have a great evening.